Growing up, Courage the Cowardly Dog terrified me. Not overemphasizing, not embellishing, just the dog honest truth. As much as I loved the show and grew a larger love for it as I would get older, there are still so many disturbingly haunting moments from that show that infest my brain when I close my eyes at night. So naturally, I was very excited when straight out of nowhere, Scooby-Doo meets Courage the Cowardly Dog was announced out of nowhere. See? See what I did there? Awful puns aside, and being as well a moderate Scooby-Doo fan, this was actually pretty cool to see happen. Especially since Courage the Cowardly Dog itself ended back in 2002. And there was that fog of Courage 3D animated pilot 7 to 8 years ago, but now, earlier this week, this straight-to-DVD and streaming release has dropped, and I am pretty excited to talk about it and share my thoughts with you. Sharing is fun, wouldn't you say? Thank you to today's video sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community for creatives where millions come together to take the next step in their creative journey. Skillshare is a service that I have used to help hone some of my crafts, whether it be writing, editing, or something useful in my personal life. Skillshare offers thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people on topics including illustration, design, photography, video, freelancing, and much, much more. Like in my free time, I want to learn how to become a better cook. And yeah, there's a ton of classes on that. I also personally took a class by YouTuber Marquez Brownlee of MKBHD about YouTube success, scripting, shooting, and editing, a very insightful class that has helped me personally sit down and better focus my script writing. Skillshare is curated specifically for learning, meaning that there are no ads, and they're always launching new premium classes so you can stay focused and follow wherever your creativity takes you. And so that you can try this yourselves, Skillshare is actually offering the first 1,000 of my subscribers who click the link in the description a one-month free trial of Skillshare so you can start exploring your creativity today. Thanks so much again to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. Thank you for supporting the sponsors that support me and this channel, it means a lot and helps out so much. The film, like a regular Scooby-Doo movie, brings you in through a mystery being solved before things start getting weird, sending the gang out on a grander adventure. After stopping this clown-masked bank robber, Scooby starts tripping out over some sort of frequency only he can currently hear, causing him to uncontrollably dance and is pulled to run towards the source of it. So the gang ditched the current bad guy of the week to follow after Scooby and find out what's gotten into him. And Scooby collapses right near a house, in the middle of... Nowhere, how convenient. Cut to inside of the house and Courage is also having a freak out over the same thing Scooby was. At night when he goes outside, Scooby and Courage run into one another, some butt sniffing ensues, no judgment, you do you. They instantly bond over having the same issue, that is, until a bunch of overgrown cicadas start bursting out of the ground. As they try and stop all these cicadas, the Mystery Inc. team arrives and runs them down with the van, and here both worlds of Scooby-Doo and Courage the Cowardly Dog collide. The real mystery from here on out as they all have to figure out what this frequency is that's affecting Scooby and Courage, why oversized insects are attacking, and what are the true mysteries behind the weirdness of nowhere. And I think first and foremost I want to say is that seeing Courage here is dang near one of the best nostalgia trips you can take as a fan of the original show. Courage himself brings that same frantic overreacting energy, if not just as much as he used to, but possibly even more. The amount of detailed animations every time he gets scared or is having to explain something shows that brings Courage to a modern day situation was done with care and respect to the original. Oh my god, this is the cutest thing I've ever seen. Marty Grabstein returns to voice Courage, and the transition from the gibberish right into the fourth wall breaking regular speaking hits the exact tone delivered back in the original. As far as the rest of the cast, the original voice actor for Hustis, Lionel Wilson, passed away back in 2003, as well as Arthur Anderson, who succeeded Lionel, passed away in 2016. Jeff Bergman takes over as Hustis in this film. While it doesn't sound quite like it used to, Jeff does a great job at keeping the attitude and tone of what those brought before him to Hustis. As for Thea White, she reprised her role for Muriel. Unfortunately, she sadly passed away this summer back in July, with this being her final role. I am happy she was able to play Muriel one more time. From everything I've watched in interviews and read about from her fans, she was a saint of a human being who loved what she did and the fans who enjoyed her work. As far as the Scooby gang, they still fit within the mold given to them of how they are portrayed in their straight-to-video movies nowadays. As a moderate Scooby-Doo fan who enjoys several variations of the show as well as a bunch of the earlier movies, not every incarnation does it for me. Here though, I did enjoy all of their characters. Something I'll get into in a second is how little a lot of their inclusions were, as it was pretty noticeable at least to me. But as far as the banter between them, their personalities, everything was fun to watch and I felt the reasons why I like Scooby-Doo in general were found here. You are watching Scooby-Doo on Cartoon Network.
Now, the only standout thing, which I think is both good and possibly not so good, is that the Scooby-Doo cast, aside from, of course, Scooby and Shaggy, truly gets shifted to the sidelines in favor for courage. Although Velma has the next biggest part after Shaggy and Scooby in helping solve the mysteries afoot. But as far as Daphne and Fred, they're kind of just there. They do have a small handful of moments with some more important to the story than others, but not much would have changed if they weren't in attendance at all. With that being said, the inverse was this movie really just being an extended episode of Courage the Cowardly Dog featuring the characters of Scooby-Doo as support. I think overall, this angle was the better route to take as Scooby-Doo can really fit in wherever they place the collaborative pick for the movie. So for them to really just show up and assist within Courage's universe rather than Courage assisting in Scooby's universe made more sense in how helps propel the guest spot in a nice light. We are already here for Scooby, but those unfamiliar with Courage or who are fans of Courage, this was a nice way of showing us a nice shiny object in full detail that drew me in in the first place. Nothing against them, but if Scooby-Doo was doing another wrestling collab movie, I'm personally not too interested. Courage, however, has my attention. The intro credits were very wholesome and fun to see a mishmash of both shows and their various villains and monsters, and the charm ensues so quickly. The chemistry between Scooby and Courage feels pretty natural as they have to tackle the brunt of the issues faced on their own. Whether it be random sentient hairballs from the sink drain or the bigger overall threat they are facing. Surprisingly, we learn a lot about Nowhere and essentially get a history lesson on what makes Nowhere, as the show puts it, the place where the most weird stuff happens in the world. Some weird things happen in Nowhere, that's for sure. There is a nice rogues gallery of classic villains from Courage that gets spotlighted for some good easter eggs as well as just pure nostalgia. The mystery itself isn't anything too out of the ordinary for either show, a case in which you could see Courage or Scooby handle on their own within their respective shows. Here though, blended together with each of their own show's stylings of handling these situations. You get the Scooby-Doo gags and chases, yes, the door scene of course. And from Courage, you see his problem solving, his research, and how he pushes his past fear living up to his name for the things he does for love. And the overall wrapping up of the film, the resolution, the reveals, everything was pretty good. With some context clues, it could be predictable based on your knowledge of the properties, but if not, it would still be a fun rewatch to see the context clues littered throughout. But all this praise of the things I did like doesn't mean it didn't have its faults. Two scenes in particular stand out as low points for me, one being early on where everyone is split between two different cars, the mystery machine and Hustis's truck, as that has been jacked by the main big bad cicada that also has the dogs trapped in it. As after a high speed battle on the roads near some cliff, a bridge gets cut and snaps as they both defy how gravity would work and drive out of the problem back onto land. Hmm. Then some nitro boosters launching the van. Hmm. I guess all this needs left is the- Ah! There it is! The grappling hook! Should have just called this movie straight out of nowhere. Scooby-Doo meets Courage the Cowardly Dog as they join the Fast and the Furious. I do it for family and Scooby Snacks. The other scene that stood out as a low point was the obligatory character rapping sequence. With no context to all of you, what you're seeing is Hustis full on rapping a song with the lyrics out of nowhere. <sighs> Yeah, Warner Bros, can can we talk? Y'all really gotta stop doing this. It was already enough this year with Porky Pig and Space Jam Legacy. We don't need all of whatever this is. My other bit of criticism comes from my personal distaste of mixing 2D and 3D animation. While here, it's not overused or even truly that bad. There was a moment that took me out of the movie for a second and focusing just on the 3D animation. It's really just a me thing. I'm sure many out there don't care about that as much as I do, but for me, it's a bit of a pet peeve, so I am sorry that I had to nitpick that. But other than that, it's just more good in my opinion. There was a nice blend of interesting visuals that play with color and perspectives and animation styles. Even a few more hauntingly fascinating visuals. But the thing I love most about this film is how they treated Muriel. She is the heart of the film, always spreading the joy her character brings and is the warm, caring figure to not only her own show's cast, but to the Scooby-Doo cast as well. She has some incredibly endearing and touching moments that in now knowing this was Thea's last performance, hit so much deeper. I appreciate how well they treated her character and gave her such an impactful role in the film. You'll find the film full of references to other shows as well, plenty of little easter eggs to find, I'm sure I missed some as well, and for the most part, the jokes are pretty well written and well delivered by the characters. Sure, there are a few corny jokes here and there, but they weren't anywhere near the worst I've ever heard. This film was a great nostalgic trip back to a place in the middle of nowhere that brought me both terror and joy as a kid. 
while bringing some other friends along for the journey. Is this the best Scooby-Doo film? Nah, I, I don't think so. But was this a Great Courage the Cowardly Dog movie? Oh heck yeah it was! This was a blast! If you're seeking out something fun that you personally have some attachment to from when you were younger, I think this is a fun time for you. If you're unfamiliar with Courage the Cowardly Dog, I still think you would find some enjoyment in it overall, but the payoffs, the references, some of the jokes, and so much more might fly right over your head and hinder the full experience for you. But let me know your thoughts on this movie if you checked it out. I appreciate you watching this video. Thank you so much. Make sure to like and subscribe for more content like this. I'll be back soon with another video, but until then, later.